antics time, my antics time, it's my antics time, and welcome back to another episode. This week, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at our honeypot colony that we've been growing. There are up to 14 workers now, and I believe that it's the right time to switch them into their final test tube before they finally are big enough to move into one of our stockade nests. Also, we have a Fidoli colony here. Uh, the big-headed ants, and I believe that we're going to have a lot of fun moving them into a nest as well. And that's what we have coming up, so let's get into it. As we take a look at our honeypot colony, you can see that their test tube has gotten a little bit blurred, more or less towards the water. The workers and the queens seem quite content, though it is time for them to move once again. Let's see if we can get a, good, a little bit of good footage before we move them. We've went over many times how to make a test tube successfully, so we don't really have to talk about that right now. But I'll just make a test tube quick and we can get on our way. That looks good to me. Push our cotton in. And grab our pusher. Next we're going to add a little bit of substrate. You don't want to add too much, but you want to add just enough to where they have a, a little bit that kind of just uh, is able to climb over easily and something that they can move around when they're ready. Honeypots in general are very fragile, so they're one of the species I have to be extra cautious about when moving them. To help me out, we're going to have my buddy, the dry cotton, right here, and they're going to help me keep the workers in once I pull them out one by one. Another thing is to always remember to get rid of the old food, and if there's any honey left, to remove that as well. My luck, it gets in my way while I'm working. we got two little workers on my tweezers here. We're going to pick them up with the paintbrush and start piling them in the new test tube. Grab one more cotton for this. Two down, twelve to go. Now as you can see, they're running all around. And this could definitely be stressful if you were newer to the hobby and really didn't know what you were doing, but I'm totally okay with the ants climbing over me, and lucky for us, honeypots are not the type of species to drastically run in one direction and try to escape. They're more or less excited that they're finally being let out of their little circular home. Now if you look closely here you can see that behind all of this sand here is where most of the brood is. Now here's a cool trick that's fairly simple that will help us get all of the brood out easily. We're going to grab a little bit of paper towel and maybe a little bit more than that. Put it into a square. And then we're basically going to use this to drag out all of the sand. Once we have most of the sand out, it'll be a lot easier to get the brood where we want them. We got about half of the workers in and we still have another half to go. Let's see here. To make this easier for us, I'm gonna grab a test tube cap and we're gonna gently tap on their test tube. This will cause most of the brood to gently slide forward and into our cap. They're not really too happy about it, but 
We just got most of their mature brood. Let's see if I can get that. Which in turn, we can turn around and pour that right into their new test tube. We're about halfway done with moving our honeypot ants into their new test tube, and now is the time that it becomes critically important to pay attention. Especially because they have repletes in the colony. With these ants here already being in the test tube, we're going to have to spend some time with the cotton off of this test tube to move the repletes in. And that is a time you have to be very, very cautious and make sure that you keep track of all the workers. smaller one. Here she is. Because her abdomen isn't completely swollen yet, she still is able to move around with ease. But the bigger one in here is going to have a harder time. So that's when we're going to have to take our time and make sure that we plant her on the wall in a place that she feels safe. And success. If we can zoom in a little bit on her, I can try to show you guys. There she is. Now let's get her in a place that she'll feel comfortable in the new test tube. There she goes. As you can see, we have a lot of honeypot ants running around now, but it was very important that we did that because the repletes are the, are the most delicate of the colony. Now that we have our replete safely in the new test tube and most of the workers in there as well, we're almost done, but we're not out of the woods yet. We still have a couple workers and the most important part of the colony, the queen. Along with the, uh, uh, the eggs, larva, and I think I see a pupa in there that we didn't move yet. If you look in our new test tube, you can tell that the ants are not freaking out as much. This is basically because they're used to being handled on a week-to-week -week basis, and they know that they're not in any real danger. And there she is. Say hello to the queen, ladies and gentlemen. She's gonna fall. Now that our honey pots are completely moved into their new test tube, we finally get a great view of what they look like up close. From the workers to the massive amount of brood that they have in the back, all the way to their replete. They look beautiful and they have all of these different colors in them from the different kinds of honey I've been giving them. So far, it's been an absolute success. And I believe we won't be waiting too long until the day that they're ready to move into their own stockade nest. On to the second part of our video, we have a huge big-headed ants colony with over 30 workers. 
Matter of fact, it's probably more around 70. It's a huge, huge colony that needs to be put into a nest as soon as possible. We're going to be able to grant their wish of freedom, as so many ants wish for right now, and we're finally going to get the initial reaction of them moving into a nest. They've been growing in this test tube for quite a while, and finally they have their first major. Now, in some cases, Fidoli can have their first majors within the first dozen to twenty workers, but in this case I saw that they definitely waited and took their sweet time. This may be because workers actually hatch quicker than bigger ants like majors and super majors. Or maybe they didn't feel like they needed the extra security because they've been so well cared for. Either way though, seeing their first major is a massive, massive sign that they are ready to move out of their test tube and finally step their feet on the ground. Without further ado, let's plug them into a nest and watch their initial reactions. Next up, we're going to go ahead and put our barrier around the outworld. This is Fluon that I've mixed myself. If you don't know anything about barriers, Fluon, and how to keep the ants inside the outworld, we have a video talking about how to prevent ants from escaping. It's a great video to watch, and I've personally watched it myself. So once we get the cotton more or less soaked with Fluon, there we go, we're starting to drip. We're gonna gently go around the edges. You can smear, you can pat, and you wanna make sure that you get an even layer all around the top. This is gonna prevent your ants from escaping the outworld. They have a decent amount of numbers right now, so this is definitely something you wanna do. Let me bring the light down quick just so you can see. The barrier is now basically dry and when it dries it creates this milky white coloring. And this is when you know that your barrier flew on or uh, you can use uh, uh, rubbing alcohol and baby powder. When you see this white it means that it's dry and it's ready to go. So next on our list we're going to add some sand. Every vortex and stockade nest comes with a bag of sand, just enough to fill the outworld. Alright everybody, we finally hit a time where the Fidoli colony has settled down enough to plug them into their new nest. We're going to gently pick them up so none of them touch the cotton. Wait for it, wait for it, and the plug-in. Oh, that one's so smooth. All right, we're plugging them into the nest right now. Let's watch for their initial reaction. The first worker has entered the stockade's nest followed by a couple of sisters too. If we switch over to the test tube, you can tell that they're really getting riled up now. They realize that something has changed. They don't know it yet, but they have been set free into a whole massive world where they will be able to grow undisturbed for at least three to four years. We have a lot of action going on in the test tube now. Word is spreading quick that the cotton that kept them inside of their circular home has no longer been in place. Well, my friends, that's everything for today in a nutshell. We sure got some amazing footage of the honeypot ants once we moved them into their new test tube. It makes the other video footage we got of them look like nothing but rubble. Other than that, we sure had a lot of fun moving in the Fidoli, the big headed ants, into their new stockade's nest today. And I already have a light barrier in the front so they don't have to worry about any kind of light coming into their new nest. 
I know that we're gonna have to name them something epic, and I'm gonna leave the big headed ants colony name up to you, the community of my antics. I need you guys to think of something spectacular to name them, because that name will stick with them as long as they stay in the ant room. Now though, I do want to bring it up one more time, we did lose the fire ants, not because they died or anything, but we gave them the chance to live in a 100 gallon aquarium at a buddy ant keeping house, which I think that they're going to be epically adored and taken care of there. But in the meantime, the big headed ants were a way to, to sort of bring the small yet fearsome ants back into the ant room, and I promise, I promise, the Fidoli are here to stay. Other than that, we do have our Campanatus festinatus colony, which is now named the Golden Nuggets. I know I haven't revealed that until now, but we got that out of the comments, and thank you so much for participating in the name game. I know that the Golden Nuggets are going to have a lot of screen time coming up in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned, get ready, be excited, and know that you have something to look forward to in the Miantics Ant Room. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful night, and as always, happy ant keeping.